Good afternoon, African Confessions. I am back with another episode. There is a message that I want to share with you guys, and it comes from that young lady who is saying that she was a slay queen. We flew back to Harare. Yes, indeed, I was a glorified prostitute, but I had never seen the things that I had seen in Joburg. When I was in Joburg, I had met two new friends of mine, one was a Kosa lady and one was a colored lady. I had met them at that house in four ways. We had exchanged numbers and they told me that they would get in touch with me as soon as possible because they were also dealing with high profile clients. The colored lady, I will call her Aza, she was a very beautiful lady with real thick hair, tall like a supermodel and she came from a chaotic family. Her mom was a single mom and she was born addicted to drugs. Her mom used to sell drugs, so she had to run away from her home because her mom sold drugs at her house and she was very abusive. That is how she ended up being an escort. Her story is painful. She once stayed in a brothel and was being used by the Nigerian guys. She would do the sleeping and then the Nigerian guy that she was working for would give her 5% of the money and also she was forced to be on drugs. She then escaped from the brothel through the assistant of a client who was just a good Samaritan. The Kosa girl, I will call her Zizi, she was just a Kosa girl who loved money and she came from a normal family, but she was just a lady who just didn't want to work or look for a job. She was comfortable with being a slay queen. She is a mom of one and she rented her own apartment till to date. When I met her, her apartment was fully furnished and you would think that she was a working lady, but she would only work during the weekends. During the week, she would be home with her child. The daughter was about 13 at that time when she finally invited me at her apartment. Zizi was a true slay queen. She had to make sure that every weekend she had to find clients, give them pleasure and get paid and also still she was a thief. She was dealing with these other guys. What they used to do is that they used to go to these VIP clubs. Then they would look for people that had money. I don't know what kind of drugs they used to spike in their drinks. After those guys would be drunk, then Zizi will call the other guys that she was working with. Then they will rob the guy. She once asked me if I wanted to be on this website. She told me that the website was paying a lot of money and all that you do is that you just go on that website. Then you do a strip show and men will be watching you live whilst you are doing a strip show. They will tell you what to do. And they will be gifting you, like sending you stars, like what they do on Facebook and on TikTok. They will be sending you gifts and tips. And they will tell you what to do with the toys that you will be having. But I didn't want to be like that. I didn't want my face all over the internet. When I told her that I didn't want my face to be on the internet, that is when she reasoned with me and she said, yeah, that is not good for your face to be on the internet. So she cancelled. She had already signed up for that website. But after speaking with her, she told me that she was not going ahead with this strip thing that they do on that website. I am giving you the background so that you can understand the kind of people I was hanging out with. Back in Harare, it was life as usual when Aza called me and told me that they had a client, but this client was from an Arabic country and he wanted three girls to go with him to the UAE. But this guy, he was permanently based in South Africa. The money was good and who doesn't want money? At that time, I was really broke. There were other things that I wanted to do. I wanted to develop the house that our parents had left for us in the village. 
I was in real need of money. But first things first, I had to send Aza some of my pictures. So I went around and I looked for a guy who had a good camera. Then I invited him at the apartment where I was renting. Then the guy started taking me pictures. When he took those pictures, I was naked. After sending Aza the pictures, then he sent me a message and he told me that the guy was extremely interested and I had to send him my passport details. In two days, I was in Jobek and they picked me up from the airport. When I sent my passport details, they had already processed my visas and everything as if they in the UAE, there was someone who was sponsoring me so that I can go to that country and work as a maid. But all of this, it was just a lie. For me, Zizi and Aza, this was going to be our first time to go to the UAE. And I don't want to lie because we knew that these Arabic guys, they are always loaded with cash. I just imagined myself in the UAE because I had heard that they have the tallest buildings that can reach the clouds. One thing that got me worried was that as soon as we landed, our passports were taken and I never understood this. And when we were traveling in the car that we were traveling in, we were escorted by bodyguards. We had just lost our freedom. That guy then told us that he wanted to make sure that we will not run away. But why would we run away? We were all adults who had agreed to do this. We were given the down payment and we found ourselves in Dubai. We were given the down payment and that guy then gave the instructions to those bodyguards that they should take us to this Dubai mall for shopping. We were shopping like crazy. And guys, I thought of my son as I was busy shopping. I bought a lot of clothes for him. Zizi had to send some of the money to her child and also pay her bills because this was the only way for her to survive. As for me, I threw away all of those plans that had made me to go to Dubai in the first place. I was supposed to go there, make some money and continue with the renovations of the houses that were left behind by our parents in the village. But the moment when I saw Dubai, I forgot about everything. I started spending all of that money. After we were done shopping, I kept on thinking about my passport. That is when we learned that we were going to be under the mercy of that man till he got fed up with us. UAE is also hot. When I say hot, I mean that the shower water will be hot while the geezer will be switched off. I will call the guy that we came from South Africa with, Ashraf. We got the surprise of our life when he started bringing his friends to the room. Aza quickly noticed that something was not okay. She kept on telling us that Ashraf had taken us to be his sex slave. We were no longer his escorts, but we were now like his slaves. That would be something you wouldn't suspect because we were in a very nice hotel. These Arabs have a lot of money and they have reserved women. All they want is to explore other women and try things their wives will never do for them. On that morning, I saw three men in their early 50s walking in the hotel room and they walked in with their sons. We were told to look good and to smell good. To my surprise, we were told that these men wanted their sons to have intercourse with us whilst their fathers were looking. What have intercourse with who? This came as a surprise to us. All this time, we had been sleeping with this Ashraf guy. He would exchange all of us while at different occasions. Now this, all this time, we thought we were here for him. Aza was extremely pissed off and she kept on saying, I told you, this guy is going to keep us as his captives. We had no option. He just told us that if we wanted our passports back, we should cooperate. And he told us that in this country that we were in, if we get caught without our passports, we were going to be in deep trouble. He even scared us and he said, do you know that they can actually sentence you to death if they find out that you are in this country without your passports? We were really scared. These boys were young. They were really young, my brother. I know that prostitution is wrong, but 
according to my own standards, this was just unacceptable. It really traumatized me. We obeyed and we did everything as their fathers clapped for their own sons. After those guys were done with us, it was their father's turn. I hated Ashraf, and after they were done using us, they transferred some money to his account. He charged them a lot of dirhams. Our money was a fixed amount. Yes, it was just 4,000 US dollars per person. But him, I'm sure that he made a lot of money. I have never been hurt like this in my life. I never expected that I would ever have intercourse with someone so young. All that I wanted was to shower with that hot to buy water and go to sleep. Even if you are an escort or a prostitute, sometimes you can get a heartbreak, especially when you can see that I am now being abused. We had to find our, we had to find our passports and to escape. Dear listeners, right there was a message that I received from Anonymous. I had to skip some parts that were so sensitive because she was even talking about the ages of these young men that they were sleeping with. So I had to skip those sensitive parts. Strange things do happen in this world. I'll be back with another episode.